Hi, welcome to my channel. I've mentioned Cú Chulainn in a few of my videos. He was Ireland's greatest warrior hero. Um, I thought I would do a video just on him, on the story and legend of Cú Chulainn. The story is 2,000 years old. So there's a lot of different versions out there. I'm just gonna do the most basic and well-known parts of it. If you like this kind of thing, please like this video and subscribe for more, and let's get started. When Cú Chulainn was born, he was given the name Satanta. His mother was the sister of the King of Ulster, Connor McNessa, and his father was said to be the Irish god Lu. So being half god, he had this very superhuman strength. He was brave, he was powerful. He was kind of like the Irish Hercules. And he also had this power that when he got into a rage, he was able to transform into this huge beast creature, um, kind of similar to the Hulk. As a young child, Satanta was very brave, very strong. He loved playing with his spear. He loved playing hurling. He was known to hit the schlitter, the ball, with the hurling stick with huge force and then run faster than the ball to catch it before it hit the ground. His biggest dream was to join the Macra. This was a training school for young boys to teach them how to be warriors. It was run by his uncle, King Connor McNessa, and the best of the Macra were chosen to be part of the Red Branch Knights, which were his uncle, the king's band of warriors. So he would beg his mother to let him join the Macra, but she kept refusing. No, he was too young. But then, knowing it was his destiny, she reluctantly one day let him go to join the Macra. So Satanta set off for his uncle's castle, and it was a long journey, but when he arrived, he found the boys of the Macra outside the castle playing hurling, and he immediately wanted to join in, so he ran in, grabbed the ball, but the boys of the Macra were furious that this stranger joined their game uninvited, and they all attacked him. And he fought back, and he got in a rage, which meant he turned into this bigger creature, and he was able to take them all on by himself. And King Connor heard this commotion from inside the castle and he came to the window and he was very impressed by what he saw. And Satanta shouted out to him, I'm your nephew, I've come to join the Macra. And King Connor knew that one day he would make a great warrior, so he allowed him to join the Macra and Satanta absolutely thrived. One day the blacksmith, Cullen, was having a banquet in his home. He made the spears and swords for the king and all of the Red Branch Knights, so he invited them over for a feast. King Connor was on his way when he came across Satanta playing hurling with all his friends. He asked Satanta did he want to come as his guest. And Satanta said he'd love to, but first he just wanted to finish playing the game of hurling. And once that was over, he would follow him out. So Connor said, great, I'll see you there, and went on his way. So King Connor arrives at Colin's home, and Colin asks him, is anyone else coming? And King Connor completely forgets about Satanta. So he said, no, no one else coming. So Colin closes the gates and releases his hound to guard the property. Um, the hound is not a normal guard dog. This is a beast. It takes three chains and three men on each chain to control this hound. So Satanta comes a little while later and he comes straight from the game so he's still carrying his hurling stick and the schlitter and the hound spots Satanta coming and he starts charging at him ferociously and Satanta as fast as he can throws the schlitter towards the hound and it goes straight down his throat killing him instantly. The guests inside hear the commotion and King Connor jumps up and shouts out we've forgotten Satanta! They think he must be destroyed, no one can take on this hound. So they go outside and are shocked to find the hound dead and Satanta unharmed. So Colin is happy that Satanta is safe, but he's heartbroken to have lost his hound. Who is going to guard his home now? So Satanta steps forward and says, until you find a puppy to raise and guard your home, I will guard your home. And from that day forward, he took the place of the Hound. And he gained a nickname with this new role as the Hound of Cullen. In Irish, Cú Cullen. Cú Cullen gained a reputation. He was a member of the Red Branch Knights and he was known as the best fighter in Ireland, but he was also very handsome. So every woman fell in love with him. And King Connor and the men of the Red Branch Knights wanted Cú Cullen to find a wife and settle down because they didn't want their wives looking at him. So Cú Cullen was introduced to a lot of potential brides, but he wasn't interested in any of them. He wanted someone that was his equal. And he heard of a woman named Emer. Emer was said to have the six gifts of womanhood that made her the perfect woman. They were beauty, a gentle voice, sweet words, wisdom, skill at needlework, and chastity. Um, but she was the daughter of a man called Forgel, who was known as being incredibly possessive of his daughter. But still, Cullen went out to meet her, and when they met, 
he decided to try and um, see how smart she really was. So he spoke in riddles and with words that no one understood what he was talking about except for Emer. She answered him with the same kind of riddles and the same kind of wit and he knew she was his equal and um, they fell in love with each other. And he pointed to her chest and said, I see a fine country there with a sweet resting place. And she said, no man shall rest there until he proves himself to be the greatest warrior. And she set him some specific tasks. And he said that he would do those tasks and he would prove himself to her. However, when Forgel found out, he was furious. He did not want his daughter marrying Kukulin. So he decided he had to get rid of Kukulin. So one day he got a disguise and he went to King Connor at Magnessa's castle and he sat down with King Connor and Kukulin and had a conversation with him about the greatest trainer of warriors of all time, Skahak. And she was known as the warrior queen. And he asked, why hasn't Kukulin gone to train with her? Because only she can make him the most powerful. And Kukulin fell for this and immediately set off to be trained by Skahak across the sea on an island. He said goodbye to Emer and that he would be back for her. And Forgal was happy because not many people could survive Skahak's training. So he knew either Kukulin would die or at least he'd be gone for several years, which in the meantime, he would marry Emer off to another man. So it's a treacherous journey, but Kukulin finally reaches the island to begin his training with Skaha. Before she'll train him, he has to prove that he's worthy of her training, which he does. And he is going to represent her in battle against her arch rival, Aoife. And before he goes, he asks Skaha, what is Aoife's greatest pride? And she tells him it's her chariot. So Kukulin and Aoife meet, swords drawn, and they have this huge battle. And Aoife has also been trained by Skahak, so she's a great warrior as well. And it's a great battle, and she smashes Kukulin's sword. And just as she's about to deliver her final blow, he shouts out, Your chariot's about to go over the cliff! And as she turns to look, he throws her down, and she knows that she's beaten. But she begs for her life, and he says, Okay, I'll spare you your life if you make peace with Skahak, which she agrees to. Aoife falls in love with Kukulin, and they have an affair for the next seven years while Kukulin trains under Skahak. And then, as Kukulin is about to return to Ireland, he's finished his training, Aoife tells him that she's pregnant, and he tells her that if it's a boy, to name him Conla, and he gives her a gold ring and says when the ring can fit their son's finger to send the son to Ireland to find him. So Kukulin arrived back in Ireland ready to marry Emer. Forgel's plan didn't work. He, first of all, Kukulin is still alive, but he also didn't manage to marry off Emer to another man. He nearly had her married to the King of Munster, but when the King found out that Emer and Kukulin were in love with each other, he backed out because he did not want to be on the wrong side of Kukulin. So Forgel put an army around his fort so that Kukulin couldn't get in. He still didn't want Kukulin anywhere near his daughter. Kukulin arrives, attacks the fort, kills the army and gains entrance. When Forgel saw that Kukulin had come in, he ran away and tripped up and died. And Emer was obviously upset that her dad had died, but it wasn't by Kukulin's hand, so she can't be mad at him. And he's now proven that he is the greatest warrior. He defeated this entire army so they can get married. At the time, the King of Ulster was supposed to have the right of the first night with any bride. So when Emer and Kukulin got married, she was supposed to first spend the night with King Connor McNessa, but nobody wanted to upset Kukulin, especially King Connor. He didn't want to make his nephew angry. So they all came to an agreement. So on their wedding night, Emer was brought to King Connor's bed, but that night a druid slept between them in the middle to make sure that nothing happened. Around this time, there was a queen in Connacht called Maeve. And Maeve and her husband, Alil, were extremely competitive with each other. They were always trying to outdo each other and one-up each other. And they were pretty much matched, except that Alil had a white bull that was the pride of his herd. And Maeve wanted to find a bull that would rival Alil's bull. So she finally found one that was owned by a man named Dyra, a cattle herder in Ulster. So she sent a message asking him could she borrow his bull and he agreed at first. He said, yeah, no problem. Um, until it was made clear to him that even if he said no, the bull would be taken by force. So he was offended by this and he said, actually, no, you can't have the bull. And at this, Queen Maeve was furious. So she sent an army to Ulster to take the bull by force. 
the Red Branch Knights were not about to let an army from Connacht come into Ulster and take something from one of their own men. So they came to defend and there was a big war. Obviously, Cucullin was part of the Red Branch Knights and he took down a lot of Queen Maeve's army. So Queen Maeve approached Cucullin and said, um, I'll give you land, I'll give you money, I'll give you anything you want. And he wouldn't be bribed, he refused. But he said, okay, look, you send one man, one-on-one, -on -one, and if I win, then you have to leave and you can't have the bull, which she agreed to. So Queen Maeve summoned Ferdia, her most powerful warrior. But Ferdia and Cucullin were like, brothers, they were best friends, they had both trained together under Skahak, so Ferdia refused, he wouldn't go up against Cucullin, but Queen Maeve finally got her way and he reluctantly agreed to, and Cucullin and Ferdia fought for five days, at night they would tend to each other's wounds, and on the sixth day Cucullin killed Ferdia and he was heartbroken and brought his friend's body to be buried. Meanwhile, Maeve had snuck in, stolen the brown bull and brought it back to Connacht. She put her brown bull in with her husband's white bull and they fought. The brown bull killed and defeated the white bull and immediately escaped and walked for two days until it got back to its master, Dyra, back to its home. And as soon as it arrived home, it collapsed and died. There's a lot more to this story and um, as I said I'm kind of just taking snippets of everything because I can't fit it all in one video but um, I think the meaning behind this story is that in the end there were no winners, there was only losers, everyone died and is supposed to represent any conflict or fighting between Ulster and Connacht because it would just be wasteful. So years pass and Cucullin is still the most powerful warrior in Ireland but across the sea his son, Kunla, is growing up and is also becoming a very powerful warrior. He inherited his father's strength and skill, and he's also being trained by Skahak. But Aoife, his mother, when she found out that Cucullin had left her and married the love of his life, Emer, she was furious because he had never told her that there was another woman. So she decides to get revenge on Cucullin in the worst possible way through their son, Kunla. So when Kunla reaches the age that the gold ring fits on his finger, she does what she promised and sends Kunla off to Ireland to find his father. But she gives Kunla three rules. Number one, when he starts on his journey, he cannot turn back, he must continue. Number two, never tell anyone his name or who he is. And number three, never back down from any battle. So Kunla set off on boat to go to Ireland and find his father. As he approached Irish shores, King Conor McNess's men saw him coming and asked him his name. He refused to give his name, so they said, well, if you're not telling us who you are, you're not allowed to come into Ireland, so turn back, which again, he refused to do. So. Then they challenged him to a duel and he, with his father's skill and strength, killed them all very easily and King Connor found out what was going on so he sent for Cucullin. Cucullin arrives and demands the boy to tell him his identity, who he is, but the boy refuses. So they have a duel and they're very matched in skill so it's a tough fight and at one point Cunla manages to chop off a piece of Cucullin's hair which enrages Cucullin and in his rage he transforms into the beast creature he does when he's angry and Cunla immediately recognizes this is my father and he drops his weapons but Cucullin strikes the boy and mortally wounds him and as Kunla lays dying he shows him the ring tells him who he is and says together we could have carried the flag of Ulster to the gates of Rome and beyond and then he dies and Cucullin is heartbroken he's killed his only son time passes and Cucullin is still infamous still the best fighter in Ireland and still incredibly handsome and every woman falls in love with him one of these women is Morgan, the Irish goddess, and she tries to seduce Cucullin, but he turns her down and she is absolutely furious and she vows revenge. One day when he was on his way to battle, Cucullin came across three one-eyed hags on the side of the road eating dog meat and they asked him did he want to join them. The three one-eyed hags were actually Morgan in disguise. She was a goddess and she had this ability, this power to transform herself into everything. So she was trying to make a trap for Cucullin. He had sets of rules that he would not break. He knew if he ever broke one of these rules it would lead to his downfall. 
One of these rules was to never eat dog meat and the other one was to never refuse hospitality. So here he was forced to choose which rule does he break. So he had a little bite of the dog meat and immediately he was weakened on one side of his body, but he continued on to battle. Kukulin met his opponents and the battle began, um, but Kukulin was weakened. He couldn't fight with his usual strength and skill and was eventually defeated. He refused to die lying down though. He wanted to die standing up with a sword in his hand, so he managed with the last of his strength to tie himself to a stone and died standing up. His opponents weren't sure, was he really dead? Was he alive? So for three days they watched at a distance and it was only when a raven came and landed on his shoulder and perched there that they were sure he was dead. The raven was actually Morgan. She had come and um, she transformed herself and come to see his dead body. So one of the enemies decided he wanted to take Ku Cullen's head as a trophy. So he approached the body and as he approached Ku Cullen's sword fell from his grip and as it fell it chopped off his enemy's hand. The stone where Cucullin died is still in Ireland today. It's called Clockafarmore Standing Stone I think and it's in County Louth. There are so many more stories of Cucullin and so much more details that I couldn't, I had to leave out because I couldn't include it in the video for time. But if you want me to do a part two and go into more of these stories let me know and that's it. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more please subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye!